The Lord be with you. Welcome to a introductory video on something that we're going to be starting here at Our Redeemer. Uh, I've kind of titled some information on the board, Music and Worship. And we are going to uh, reintroduce uh, the role of cantor in our congregation. Uh, so some history uh, in my first go around here, uh, we had uh, quite an opportunity and quite a blessing uh, to to use this role in our worship services. Uh, we had uh, three women, uh, Ruth Eicher, Eva Dieterding, and Kathy O'Malley, who along with myself were able to uh, do some of the chanting and some of the musical elements in our services. Uh, Ruth uh, got married and uh, moved to Ohio. Uh, Eva was already married, and uh, I'm not certain where she and her husband now live. Uh, and Kathy O'Malley uh, is still uh, a happy part of our congregation. Kathy and I are going to uh, uh, serve the role of cantor uh, in our congregation. Um, every once in a while, uh, we're not going to do this every Sunday. Uh, because again, uh, not everything has to be done uh, the way it's always done. Some Sundays we may speak and some Sundays we may sing. Uh, there is an opportunity for variety uh, in our worship. But a cantor uh, is someone who uh, leads some of the music uh, in our services. Uh, it is related uh, to, to, to chanting and to singing. And so uh, we're going to be doing some of that. Why uh, do we do that? Well, from a uh, personal standpoint, uh, when I grew up on the East Coast, uh, I talked like I was from the East Coast, which means I talked very, very fast. And sometimes I uh, smush all of my words together. And it can be hard to hear what I am saying. Uh, I had this made known to me when I was in college and seminary and in the church because I was more in the Midwest where people talk a little bit slower. Hearing the word is especially important. Faith comes by hearing. So someone suggested to me, sing. When I sing, I cannot speak as fast as I would like to, as I am comfortable. It forces me to slow down. Words are heard. And in our worship services, there are a lot of words to hear. So part of why we have as much music in our services as we do is so we can hear and learn. Now, the role of cantor is an ancient role. We take into account that not everybody can read. For a while in our world, not everybody needed to read. Maybe some people needed to, but for the most part, you could get by without knowing how to read. Or maybe there was some functional literacy. But when you went to church, there would be a cantor and a choir, and they would bring the word to the people. And they would hear it over and over and over again. Repetition is the mother of learning. So part of what the music does in our services is it helps us with learning. And I think some of it's related to artistry. Not just vocal arts, 
but the church has really celebrated the visual arts. Sculptures and banners and tapestries and mosaics and windows, carvings, music. All of these things bring the word to us. Again, for people that look at printed words and say, well, I don't know what any of that means. I can see a carving of the fall into sin. And I can read with my eyes those images and I can understand it. I can look at the stained glass windows right over there and I can see God's word. So that's sort of why we do some of what we do. But I don't sing so good. That's okay, we're not asking you to. I'm not a trained musician. I feel fortunate to have uh, the ability that I do. So how are we going to do this? Well, thanks to technology, we're gonna print a lot of it in our bulletin for you. The musical notation is there, the words are there. First off, how do we do this? So I've written for us Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And I've printed it right out of what's in our hymnal. With the pointing, that's what uh, we call this. All of these little marks, that's how God's word is pointed. So when you see this line, that's when you know something happens. This asterisk, this star, that also tells you something's going to happen. So you keep your eyes open for those directional signs, like you're driving a car. Here's music. Well, I don't really know what those notes are. That's okay. Again, it sort of tells you which way to go. First of all, here's this asterisk. You see it right there. So this measure is for that portion. This note with the brackets around it, that's for that. These lines are for the three syllables. Shepherd is only two, but we divide it into three. I shall not want three syllables. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. These point the text for us. This tells us where to go. All of these go together. So we'll learn this. We'll practice this. We're going to use this this first Sunday, uh, January 14th. And Kathy and I will do the singing of what we call the intro it. That's our entrance right. It's how the pastor gets where he needs to be. So we're going to kind of introduce it a little bit, maybe re-familiarize ourselves with it. And before Sunday, I'm going to send you an email with a printout with some of this information on there. So just a, a little introduction for you, something to say about what we're going to reintroduce this role of cantor in our congregation. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in church. Bye-bye.